Welcome back to The Witcher 3. In this episode, I'm going to totally not spend my unused skill points, and I'm just going to go wander around and stare at bushes. Oh, wait, uh, sorry, I kind of meant the opposite of that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is spend my skill points, which I uh, should have done last time. <coughs> and uh, I've already taken a look at what I want to spend my skill points on, so don't worry, I'm not going to spend a half hour looking at all my skills. Okay, so I'm level 10. And in two more levels, I will gain an additional slot. So for now, these are all my slots, and I've got one additional slot. So, what I'm going to do is, I have three points. I'm going to spend two of them on increasing my oil preparation. Because I've really focused on oil. Giving uh, my oils a greater chance to poison the target. And then, once I keep putting more points into this, it's going to actually give me protection against the types of monsters that I have oiled on my blade. So I'm going to be a very preparation-heavy sort of character, you know? You know, like, know what you're fighting, understand understand what you're fighting, and prepare. So that's the kind of character I want to be. So let's keep putting points into this. Okay. Now I've got one skill point left, and I want to spend that on something, uh, something new. So under general, there's actually some really good stuff. The only one I have at the moment is the increases maximum vitality by 500, which is pretty damn good. You can see my vitality is about 5,000, so the increase of 500 is, uh, it's not bad. It's like, uh, I, I guess about 10% of an increase in your health. Or would that be 20? Uh, no, I think it'd be about 10%. Somewhere around there. It's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that, and... Um, there's some other really, really nice abilities. Like, these general abilities have a big effect. A really big effect. And there's three here. There's, there's this whole series of light, medium, and heavy armor specific skills. Yeah, so this one has to do with light armor, this one has to do with medium, this one has to do with heavy. And how each one works is basically each piece of heavy or medium or light armor that you have, it gives you some sort of a bonus. That's kind of... It's kind of like a light character build sort of system, right? Because for each piece of heavy armor you have, you have more health, and your strong attacks do more damage. So, right, you're a tanky character that has lots of health and does a lot of damage with your, with your strong attacks. Then medium is more like a mage, focuses on sign intensity and stamina. And then light one focuses on critical hit damage and fast attack damage. Hence, you know, cat school techniques. So, like, you're light, you're a ninja, you run around your opponent, get behind them, and stab them before they even see you. And that's the one I want to go for. Because I think at the moment I have mostly light armor on. And that's kind of the character I want to be. I want to be, you know, I want to be the badass Geralt ninja who knows, understands the creatures that he's fighting. You know, researches them, prepares everything, the potions and the oils, and he oils up his blades. And then he just gets in there and without even being seen, well... <laughs> let's let's be honest, he's, he's going to be seen, but still. You know, in my mind, my uh, my fantasy is Geralt isn't even seen and he just stabs his opponents in the back. So I'm actually going to go for this. Okay, cool. That's going to be a pretty huge increase. I mean, each piece of light armor increases critical hit damage by 25%. You know, how many pieces of armor do I have? Well, let's go check out in a second. Um, I also took a look at the mutagens that I have. And these can just be placed in here whenever you want. And in case you forgot how the mutagens work, which I did until I messed around with them, because it's been forever since I've done anything with them, is uh, they have their base increase. Like, for this one it says plus 50 vitality. And plus it's a green mutagen, which means if you put it in the slot next to any other green ability, each one of those will give it uh, an additional boost. As you can see, this, this is uh, plus 50 vitality, but because it's connected to all these other green abilities that are kind of in the same category as it, it's actually vitality plus 200. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's any mutagens that actually match with these general abilities. However, I do have one blue ability here for the Quen sign, so let's put in something blue. Yeah, let's put in the Cockatrice mutagen, plus 5% sign intensity. But since it's connected to this one, it's actually plus 10%. Doesn't really matter, because the only thing I really use is Quen, but it's something. Certainly doesn't hurt. Yep, 
And now because of the points that I put into this, I now get 15% protection against monsters of the same oil type that I have applied to my blade. Sweet. I feel pretty good about that. Okay, yeah, so let's see how much of a difference this is going to make. 25% and fast attack damage 5%. So how many pieces of light armor do I have? Let's see. This is... Yep, that's light armor. So that's one. Two. Three. Ah, oh, my damn boots. They're medium. This is unacceptable. Alright, <laughs> let's take a look at what other boots I have. Oh no, do I not have any boots? Hmm. What if I just take off my boots? Does that count as light armor? You know what? Those boots are starting to smell anyway. I'm just not going to have any boots on. It totally doesn't count for light armor. I don't even care. I'm taking off the boots. They offend me. I'm supposed to be light and lith. Or lithe. I don't, I don't even know what that word is. But anyway, I've got three pieces of light armor. So that means my critical hit damage is increased by 75%. And my light attack damage is increased by 15%. So that's a big, that's a big boost. That's a really big boost. Okay, and as I said, I am truly, totally, honestly, actually going to focus on the main quest. I'm gonna just go right past the question marks. I swear. Just make sure I'm going the right way. Mm-hmm. Just skirt along this island here and then take a left. I so want to stop at every question mark along the way. But if I do that, I am never finishing this quest. And don't forget, the crones. Check the ears. Look at the ears. My hunch. We shall see. I'm not even going to look at the map because I know I'm just going to see a bunch of question marks around me. Don't look. Don't look. Don't look. I'll be tempted. Okay, looking appropriately, appropriately boggy. I think we're here. It's uh, disturbingly dark. Let's go ahead and wait until the morning. How convenient, Roach. I didn't know you came along with me. Must have been stowed away in the boat. Hey. 
Hey there. Mmm, treats. Yummy. Oh, oh. That's disgusting. Maggot infested treats. <laughs> and I'm walk I'm walking in the bog without any shoes on. I'm gonna get like twenty sorts of foot fungus diseases and stuff. Man, those are some strong strings. Well, there's really need no need to keep using my Witcher senses, right? Just follow the trail. Follow the pretty flowers. Not exactly sure I'm the sweet, innocent child that uh, that the witches are looking for. I'm looking for any creatures. Usually bogs are filled with drowners and stuff, but I don't see anything. Maybe the witches scare them all away. I think I found them. Doug went in the kitchen, stole a hunk of meat. Cook gave him a licking, strung him by his feet. Cooked them blood him empty, stripped his skin off clean. Laughed and said how tasty, best sausage I have seen. Cook's a stupid killer, shouldn't have ate the pup. Now we're light a fire, gonna roast him up. One, two, three! The one to fetch the kindlings! Thee! Interesting rhyme. Don't know you. Go away. Well, I didn't know shoes were required, mandatory, to talk to kids. Bunch of bigots. What are you doing out here alone? He's not alone. He's with Gran. But where did you all come from? We's orphans. All of you? There's a war, so there's orphans. Didn't know that. Hmm. You know, the book I read did say that the kids will, will want for nothing after they follow the trail of treats and find the witches, right? Maybe? Yeah, I was just assuming they'd find that trail of treats and then be pretty much instantly killed by the, the witches. Or the, the ladies of the wood. Or the ladies of the the bog, whatever. <laughs> um, but maybe they do actually take care of the kids. I think these are the kids that have followed the trail of treats and they're being taken care of. But the thing is, they're all young. Like, if they've been doing this for a while, I would expect to see some older ones. Which makes me think that maybe they are taken care of for a certain amount of time. And then perhaps they're used. I'm looking for the witches of Crookback Bog. You looks like a witch yourself. The w w witches of the bog. We can't go in the bog. Gran don't let us. When my brother Zemek went missing, Gran said it was because he went in the woods and got lost. Gran cried an awful lot after that. He could still come back. A young woman got lost in the swamp. She has ashen hair and a scar on her face. You kids see anyone like that? Ain't no lassies here. What am I? You're no lassie. Lassies got tits. They do. Heard an old man say once, when the army was here, he says, hide them lassies in the woods. They dazzle in the soldiers with their tits. 
And it's torturing the poor lads. That's what he said. Damn, y'all are fucked up. Uh, I mean... <clears throat> Anyone else here, besides you? Meaning who? Someone who might have seen the woman. Like the six-eyed tree? Tree slapped all year. But there is Johnny. What's this talk? What kind of jabbering is this, eh? No one allowed here. Just kids. My kids. They're allowed. But who are you? Wearing swords like a bandit. I think a better question is, who did your audio mixing? Why are you so much louder? Hmm. I feel like this might be a front for the witches of the bog. You know? I mean, obviously she's not a witch, or at least she doesn't look like a witch. Who knows, maybe they have some sort of a illusory spell that makes them look different, but... Maybe this is a front, you know? It's a front for their witching operations. You look after these kids? They're my grandchildren. Gran's good to us. Gonna be soup with scratchings for supper. Kids get lost in the woods. I miss them. Seen them in the woods. No one has. <laughs> the third option. Are you a witch? Who's Johnny? Who's Johnny? Johnny, Johnny ate a cat. Come the more in some furry shack. <laughs> Watch your language. <laughs> They tells tales and tales, nor but tales. Just talking to the kids, asked them if they'd seen a young woman. Oh, I was a lovely young woman. Wore a long, beautiful braid my mummy did up for me. Had dresses with flowers on them. Maybe you've seen her. Young, ashen hair. Your betrothed. Daughter, actually. Daughter? My dear, sweet little daughter, and her sister. Where are they now? Maybe they've come to some harm. A bit of help, please. A young, ashen-haired woman just need to know if you've seen her. What are you looking at, children? Wash your hands, we'll go catch crickets. Won't learn anything from you. Aye, cos I don't know nothing. That Johnny knows. He knows a lot. When I ask him something, he says, Wait, I'll scratch my arse and tell you. Ugly word. What you saying? To the hut. You'll stand in a corner. I'll make sure you do. You. Be gone. Be gone. Instead of leaving, let's, um, let's go loot their house. Those are some uh, some alchemy ingredients right here to pick. Is it inside? Ah, oh, it's locked. Damn. It looks like it's growing inside the house. Watch where you point that thing. Huh? That's weird. There's a bow in the ground at his feet. At least he's got no arrows. If there's one thing you shouldn't trust a kid with, it's a w projectile throwing weapon, whether it's a gun or an arrow or a slingshot or anything. Yeah, don't trust him. Oh, Grand is really accepting of me just stealing all her stuff. She's kind of unpleasant, but, uh, I don't know. I'm starting to like her. The more I steal, the, the more I like her.
can't come in here. Not allowed in here. I just want to talk to the boy. Not allowed. It's not allowed. He won't talk to you anyway. Gran don't like you. And and Johnny's made up. And and strangers steal kids. Just tell me where I can find Johnny. Johnny's made up. Be gone. Be gone. <laughs> You're the one that walked into me. Find a way to lure, lure Gran away from the hut. Okay. First, I need to dump some weight. Alright, I think a lot of these swords are really heavy. Yeah, let's look at the value. If they're worth like 50 crowns or whatever or less, then let's just dump them. Okay, that's, that's pretty good. That should be enough. What about the clothes? Anything not worth a damn? Nope. Alright, that's good. Maybe I can get one of the kids to help me. Maybe you can shoot an arrow inside the house, like break the window or something, and she'll run after you. Yes. Why don't you want to talk about Johnny? One of you knows about him. The others must, too. It's just him who's pals with Johnny. They pick mushrooms and hunt snails. But Gran says Johnny's made up. The boy who plays with Johnny, he must be brave. Not brave, just stupid. <laughs> Sat his bare bum on an anthill once. But yeah, he plays with Johnny. He don't listen to Gran and goes in the woods, and then he's got to have a time out. And he eats snails, yuck. Does your Gran treat you right? She ever hurt you? Never. When we're bad, she cries. She's scared. Say strangers might take us. And we'll disappear. Have any of you ever seen Johnny? Of course. Looks just like him. Then why do you say he's made up? Gran says so. And Gran knows lots. The girl I mentioned is in danger. You gotta help me get your Gran away from the hut so I can talk to Johnny's friend. Alright. But you gotta do something for us too. Play hide and seek. Gran never does. Says her feet hurt. Let's play. You hide, but if I find you, you have to help me talk to the boy who knows Johnny. He thinks he'll find us easy. Means he's never hid from the black ones. No looking, and you have to count out loud. All your fingers, toes, too. One, two, three, eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Ready or not, here I come. <laughs> you sound so excited. Well, if there's one thing Geralt's good at, it's finding stuff. Given his Witcher senses, this is... this should not be a problem. Oh, look at all those muddy footprints. Hiding in a barrel. Oh wait, no, you're not in the barrel. You went up here. How do I get up there? I can see you. Aww. Come on out. <laughs> hmm. Like some sort of totem pole kind of thing.
or I don't know if totem pole is the right word. Some sort of a something to ward away evil, I think. There you are. How'd you find me? <laughs> Went out the window. See you. No fair. I'm supposed to win. Wait, and, and that's fair? It's fair if you, if you always win? You got a strange idea of fairness, kid. Found you. You're the last one. Bet you cheated. Come to the cottage. I gotta tell the others I won. Whatever you want. Found you all. Now you gotta keep your word and help me talk to Johnny's friend. Why wouldn't we? Promise, didn't we? Gran! Gran! Bumblebee bit Yagner in the arse! Gran! Come! Don't be afraid. Don't know nothing. I won't hurt you. Where's Gran? She's busy. Why are you scared to talk? I'm not scared of nothing. You're all scared of something. Would have told me about Johnny otherwise. I'm worried about Johnny. He don't come round no more. Once, when we was mushroom picking, I saw his burrow, but Gran yelled at me, said not to talk to strangers, cause then kids go missing. She worries about Johnny too, though she says he's made up. I think Johnny is that strange creature that I saw in some of the, like, gameplay, gameplay trailers. I don't remember what kind of a creature it was, but it was a kind of creature. One that looked like a kid. For the most part, not exactly, but close to a kid. Although a little bit, a little bit scary looking. Where are you and your friend's parents? Dad, some starved. Others were killed. Like mine. One day, I went out at dawn to look for berries in the woods. Still some around back then. When I was coming home, I heard the yells, then laughing, went up and hid in the bushes near the woods. My mum yelled, and the soldiers laughed. Lay my pot down by the barn door. Is it clean off? And then my mom. It's all right. That's enough. Jesus. I just want to talk to Johnny. He could know more than you. Not gonna hurt him, right? Cause he's real. He's not made up. I'm not gonna hurt him. Johnny used to be boy, cause Gran liked listening to his songs. When we was picking mushrooms, Johnny said he saw a girl with ashen hair in the swamp. Where can I find Johnny? There is a little meadow 
On the edge of the swamp, this strange tree grows there. Look around. You'll see him. Thank you. I wonder if I can listen in on the conversation they're having with Gran. Name calling's not allowed. <laughs> she says, when I fall asleep, rats will come and eat my eyes. Shouldn't say that. Apologize. Arse. I'll stand here till you apologize to her <laughs> and to me. I've got time. Oh, here we go. Looks like drowners and... Is that a water hag? I think that's a water hag. Hold on, those are both necrophages, right? Drowners and water hags? Yeah, so let's use some necrophage oil. Now, I think critical hits are either, like, always activated or mostly activated by getting uh, behind the enemies before you attack, I think. So I need to try to get behind them, because my critical hit damage is way, way more than my basic damage. So it's really worth getting into position for that. Small footprint. Johnny's been through here. Yeah, seriously, just a, a safety tip for home. Don't ever walk through a bog without any shoes on. Like, that's really dangerous. There's a lot of things that want to attach to you. Or could infect you. Let's use some Grape Shot. Actually, they're not really clustered together anymore. Let, let me see if I can get them clustered. Come on. This music is really cool here. I love it. I don't think I've heard the, the, the track before. There's really no reason to use two grape shot bombs on enemies that I can easily take out. But it was fun. Looks like they follow the totem poles. Or maybe not. Here's the burrow. Tracks lead to a burrow. Wonder what's inside. 
lure Johnny out of his burrow. Hmm. Johnny? Don't be afraid. You're a bucker? A lutin? Ah, a godling. Not many of you left. I'm looking for a woman with ashen hair. Seen her? Tell me everything from the start. Where did you see her? What was she doing? It's important to me. Why not? What's wrong? Can't talk? Why? Lost your voice? Can I help you somehow? Want me to follow you? No choice, I guess. Like I said, Johnny... Johnny looks like a kid. Sort of. Except creepier. Hold on, I actually want to read the entry for godlings. Wow, a godling is actually a new type of creature. It's a relict. Yeah, so what is a godling? Not too long ago... The areas around peasant hamlets were chock full of guardian spirits. Today it's nigh unto impossible to spot a brownie, bucka, or luton. And godlings, they're always the first to go. Such is the price we pay for civilization's forward march. Godlings, sometimes mistaken for luton, are woodland creatures dwelling in burrows and moss-covered hollow stumps on the outskirts of human settlements. They're similar to children in behavior and appearance, and, like children, delight in mischief. Godlings are deeply rooted in their home territory, and perform acts of care and guardianship to those dwelling near their burrows. They watch over people as well as animals, but, shy creatures by nature, they try to do so while remaining unseen. Godlings are drawn to joy and innocence, and so delight in the company of children and usually only show themselves to the young. These hard-working and clever creatures gladly perform small services for those in their care, asking only for respect and payment in the form of food or cast-off tools in return. They are easily offended by churlish, ungrateful, or simply rude behavior. Godlings also treasure their peace and quiet. When the village, when the village a godling watches over becomes too populous, or its inhabitants forget the old ways, it will abandon its burrow for good, and walk off to destinations unknown. God, isn't that just fascinating? That's really fascinating. I mean, you just, like, if you just look at this creature, just by looking at it briefly, like, my first thought is like, oh my god, this thing is horrifying, right? Because it looks very much like a child. Except its face looks like something out of a horror movie. It's got these big eyes and they're scary and its face looks weird and its skin is a strange color, right? It, like, it seems horrific, kind of. Like it's a perversion of the... Like, a perversion of the form of a child. But, just reading this, it's not... It's not something bad, you know? It's in no way a, a monster. It's actually a guardian. Like, it just likes to be left alone and help those around it. And that's pretty much it. Like, it's a... It's, it's a really nice creature. It looks kind of horrific and disturbing, but it's actually nice. I love the world of the Witcher series. It's really just surprising and interesting.
Alright, well, I think this makes for a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to follow Johnny.